Hello, I am Karen O'Connor. I'm a professional singing teacher and the writer of SingWise.com. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about the signs and symptoms of vocal fold swelling, also called mucosal edema, for those inquiring minds who want to know. A lot of these symptoms may be applicable to some form of injury as well. A large part of what I do in my job from day to day is work with singers who are dealing with vocal health issues, including injuries that are preventing them from being able to sing with comfort and consistency and confidence. I diagnose the probable causes of those injuries, the unproductive and unhealthy technical habits that the student is typically not aware of, and then help that student rehabilitate the voice by changing those faulty voice use patterns so that he or she can avoid the same kind of injury in the future. It's really important to pay very close attention to the earliest signs of swelling before it worsens to the point of causing an injury such as nodules, polyps, cysts, hemorrhage, or reactive injuries. Reactive injuries will occur when a node on one vocal fold, for example, causes irritation, then injury to the other vocal fold. Many singers either don't pay attention or they choose to ignore these subtle clues that something might be wrong with their vocal health until the problem starts to interfere more seriously with their ability to perform singing tasks normally. Swollen vocal folds do not vibrate the same way as healthy ones. The swelling tends to hinder normal vibration, and so the voice will sound and function differently. This leads to alterations in voice quality, loudness, and pitch. Signs of swelling of the vocal folds, as well as possible injury, may include a delayed phonatory onset in which voicing lags and begins a fraction of a second later than intended. The singer's tone initiates a tiny bit later than intended because the swelling on the vocal folds makes the folds thicker and heavier so that it takes a bit longer to set them into vibration. The ability to perform singing tasks softly, especially when a softer dynamic is combined with a higher pitch. The singer has to increase loudness in order to initiate sound. This problem may also manifest itself as an atypical, for that particular singer, pushing of chest voice up higher as an undesirable compensatory adjustment which may mask those underlying swelling effects. Breathiness in the tone, especially one that increases as pitch gets higher. This breathiness may be constant or transitory, it may come and go, and it may be perceived in several forms, including an audible emission of air, just general breathiness, aspiration, that sound of an H before the onset of sound, faint noise, buzzing, or push turbulent air, respiratory overdrive, intermittent aphonia, in which voicing stops involuntarily for a fraction of a second or longer. It just cuts out on you increased vocal effort and loss of endurance. The singer may no longer be able to withstand the same rigorous training or performing schedule as before. The voice may feel sluggish, heavy, unresponsive, and overpressurized. A loss of upper range, that's pretty straightforward. Deterioration of vocal flexibility and agility, which makes singing coloratura, trills, melisma, vocal runs and riffs, more difficult. Sometimes this forces the singer to even change repertoire, the songs, to accommodate the change in voice. This may then result in a change in voice classification as the singer leans increasingly toward lower, heavier, fuller, thicker tessitura and classification. Day-to-day -day variability in vocal ability or greater than usual variability in vocal capability over time. This variability would be beyond the normal fluctuations in ease of execution and sound quality experienced by all singers. We all have on and off days depending on how we're feeling, how well rested we are, but this is beyond what we would normally experience. The voice becomes increasingly unpredictable and unreliable over time. The voice squeaks, squeals, or sounds otherwise squeezed. In some cases, the vibration of the vocal folds becomes damped at the site of the swelling or stiffness and only one segment of the folds vibrates and then this may result in simultaneous production of two frequencies, what is called diplophonia. So the vocal folds may even vibrate at different frequencies or the portion of the vocal folds before, in front of and behind that site of swelling may vibrate at different frequencies. Hoarse, rough, scratchy, harsh, raspy, or gravelly voice quality, when it's not intended. Vibrato instability. 
typically when there's vocal fold swelling, there's a slowing down of the vibratory rate and a widening of the extent of the pitch excursion. In other words, the dreaded vocal wobble. If the swelling, the inflammation is severe, the singer may completely lose his or her voice. Although sometimes vocal fold injuries and swelling are caused by illness or infection, in the vast majority of cases, it's caused by some form of vocal misuse, abuse, or overuse. The body tends to respond to repeated or prolonged trauma by attempting to heal itself, and part of that attempt involves inducing inflammation. If the singer chooses to ignore the early warning signs and continues to misuse, abuse, or overuse the voice, the swelling will worsen and then injury becomes increasingly likely. Injuries are harder to come back from. They require a great deal more time for healing and rehabilitation. The more serious the swelling or injury, the longer the recovery time. And if the voice is misused, abused, or overused before it's had a chance to fully recover, the inflammation in any subsequent injury will become compounded. So this is why it is in our best interest to carefully and continuously monitor our voices for any signs of possible vocal injury, and then take the necessary steps to ensure that mild swelling, for example, doesn't degenerate further and become a serious injury, and then that problems don't become further compounded by compensatory maladjustments of technique. If you suspect that you are suffering from vocal fold swelling, rest your voice, see an ENT as soon as possible, begin speech therapy if it's prescribed, and consult with a knowledgeable singing teacher who will be able to help you pinpoint the areas of your technique that are, that are causing your vocal folds to swell. Don't simply get stuck in a cycle of injury, voice rest, injury, voice rest. Find the long-term solution so that you can avoid these kinds of problems in the future. I obviously can't run through the entire list of possible technical errors that singers could be making that might lead to vocal fold swelling or injury. There are many ways in which we might misuse, abuse, or overuse our voices, and we need to consult privately with a singing teacher who can pinpoint the root cause and help us change what we're doing to cause our voices to retaliate. As always, I am available to answer questions here on YouTube, on the SingWise Facebook page, and through email at karen at singwise.com. And please like this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so, so that you'll receive notifications whenever I post new videos like this one. And remember, be good to your voice and it will be good to you.